Hello everyone. In this video, we will be talking about first, second, and third generation of glucose biosensor with its recent advance. We are from group 9. The group members are Shamirul Haidil, Soleha Sabirin, Yong Sini, Wan Munira, and also Tan Hui Yi. In this video too, we will first start with brief introduction followed by first, second, and third generation of glucose biosensor and finishing it with recent advance in glucose biosensor development. To begin with the introduction, I will first tell you about the biosensor. What is actually a biosensor? It is a device that uses specific biochemical reactions mediated by isolated enzymes, immunosystems, tissues, organelles, or whole cells to detect chemical compounds, usually by electrical, thermal, or optical signals. Biosensing elements are the one responsible for binding analytes of interest to biosensor for measurement. Examples of biosensing elements include enzyme, antibodies, whole cell, aptomeres, tissue material, and also nucleic acid. To further into glucose biosensor section, I will first talk to you about diabetes mellitus. It is a chronic disease caused by inherited or acquired deficiency in production of insulin by the pancreas or by the ineffectiveness of the insulin produced. Well, what may be the consequences of this disease? Well, the patient may result in increased concentrations of glucose in the blood. This will may eventually damage many parts of the body systems, such as blood vessels and nerves. This is where glucose biosensor come in handy. It is a type of device used to monitor blood glycemic level in the body. Glucose biosensor, also known as glucometer, is very helpful for people with diabetes mellitus as they can use it to monitor their blood glucose level. How does glucose biosensor works? Well, it involves a reaction between glucose and also oxygen to gluconolactin and hydrogen peroxidase. This reaction is catalyzed by glucose oxidase enzyme or known as GOX. During this reaction too, two electrons and protons are exchanged during this reaction. First generation biosensor. The estimated glucose concentration in the sample is based on hydrogen peroxide by glucose oxidase utilizing dissolved oxygen. The biosensor is composed of an oxygen electrode, an inner oxygen semi-permeable membrane, glucose oxidase, and outer dialysis membrane. Oxygen is used as oxidizing agent. The rate of consumption of the substrate can be measured by its reduction at a platinum anode. The rate of production of the product gluconic acid can be measured using a pH electrode. The mechanism in first generation biosensor. Glucose and oxygen react to the glucose oxidase enzyme simultaneously. Glucose is oxidized into gluconic acid. At the same time, hydrogen peroxide is produced at the presence of water. Hydrogen peroxide produced will then measured by the electrode. There are three problems happen in first generation biosensor. The first problem is the interference from other materials due to high reduction potential needed to reduce oxygen. It can be solved by setting electrode potential to positive 0.65 volt. The second problem is hydrogen peroxide formed due to reduction of oxygen at the platinum cathode degrades the enzyme. The third problem is the ambient oxygen level needs to be controlled and kept constant. However, it is very tedious and impractical. Let's move on to the second generation glucose biosensor. The principles are first, enzyme membrane electrodes integrating with mutators such as ferritin in detection system as oxidizing agent. Second, an auxiliary enzymes or co-reactors that are co-mobilized 
is the principal enzyme by which enhancing the analytical quality. Third, the system uses an artificial electron mirror that replaces oxygen as the electron shuttle. This is the general equation. This is the concept on how glucose converts to gluconic acid in the presence of mirror which is ferrocane. Glucometer is one of the examples of second generation glucose biosensor. In this device, the rate of oxidation of glucose is measured not by the rate of disappearance of a substrate or appearance of a product but by the rate of electron flow from glucose to an electron surface. Third generation biosensor where the reaction itself causes the response and no product or mediator diffusion is directly involved. It is based on the direct electron transfer between the active center of enzyme and the electrode. So why it is difficult to directly couple enzyme to the electrode surface? Because the active site of enzyme is located deep inside an insulating protein. Generally, the third generation biosensor consists of three elements known as the redox polymer, the enzyme and the electrode. These biosensors are still being developed and are not commonly used for any analysis. However, developments in polymer science and nanotechnology make the third generation biosensors promising as the sensors are likely to have very short response times and be relatively independent of oxygen or cofactor concentrations. So here is the enzymatic glucose oxidation mechanisms presented by third generation sensors. Firstly, glucose is oxidized to gluconic acid by an enzyme known as glucose oxidase. The FAD component of glucose oxidase is reduced to FADH2 and electrons are released. The electrons are then utilized directly by the third generation electrode advanced in enzymatic glucose biosensor. I will be talking about Ampromatic glucose biosensor platform based on Amexine Nano Composite. This recent advance involves the immobilization of glucose oxidase on nephion solubilized AU Amexine Nano Composite over glassy carbon electrode or GCE. Nephion is a synthetic polymer with ionic properties. It is a brand name for a sulfonated tetrafluoroethylene based chloropolymer for polymer. Nephion solution was used for the better adhesion of enzyme molecules to the GCE. Amexine is a thick layer of transition metal carbide, nitrite or carbonitrite. Amexine is also known as titanium carbide. As for AU nanoparticle or in other names is gold nanoparticles which could facilitate the electron exchange between the electroactive center of GOX and the electrode. AU nanostructures allow enzymes to retain their biological activity upon adsorption. So, how do we prepare the AU Amexin nanocomposite before it is being used in the biosensor? First, the titanium carbide nanosheets or amexine will be mixed with the chlorooric acid solution. The resultant mixture is then subjected to ultrasonication. The AU amexine nanocomposite tool is then being sonicated in methion solution. The suspension will then be film cast onto the surface of the glassy carbon electrode and allowed to dry slowly. There are several advantages in using amphrometric glucose biosensor based on AU Amexin Nano Composite. It has excellent stability, excellent repeatability, and also high insensitivity. Its detection limit is of 5.9 times 10 to the power of negative 6 m.
time to go home. It's time to say.